Welcome everyone to the Climate Week webinar to end Amazon food in Peru. Your host is ready to join us, Cynthia Flores. Hi everyone, thank you so much for your patience as we made some time for folks to arrive. It looks like we have a good amount of people here today. Uh, again, my name is Cynthia Flores. I'm the digital organizer at Amazon Watch. And thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm really excited to be in community with you all here, uh, ready to take action for the Amazon and to hear from uh, Mary Mijares, which is our climate finance campaigner. Uh, she'll be sharing a bit about how the financial institutions involved in perpetuating climate change are, are enabling Petro Peru, an oil company known for human rights abuses in the Amazon. We'll also hear from Olivia Bisa, who is the president of the Chapra Nation in Peru. And she will share what her community's experiences are actually like on the ground, what her community has had to deal with. And she'll share a bit of that with you. Then we'll move on to an action arm where we'll be able to take action online. And I have shared a bit of that um, information through previous emails and that we'll be using LinkedIn and Twitter for that. And then we'll also finish with the Q&A. So please, uh, for some housekeeping notes to take, we will be, you can, you can add your questions throughout the webinar into the Q&A box. If you have any issues regarding Zoom, if you have questions, how do you Zoom, you can put that into the chat box. All of that can be found at the bottom of your screen. Um, and then we will also have live interpretation. So if you can find that, you can find that at the bottom of your screen, it looks like a globe. If you want to press that when Olivia jumps on, you can press that and choose the language of your choice. So in English, and you can also mute the background um, voice if that is a little distracting for you, um, that's an option as well. So now that that's taken care of, it's time to take a deeper dive into the world of fossil fuel financing with Mary, who will be providing us with a lot of in-depth information. Um, so we'll hand that over to the Mary's teaching. And thank you so much, Ada, for sharing all of the information in the chat. So now it's time to start with Mary's teaching, Ada. To get us started in this webinar, I will be doing a mini teaching that first explores how the oil industry works, second, state-run oil company Petróleos del Perú, or Petro Peru for short, and third, its financial backers, one of which may soon include Italy. But before we can get into how Italy may be involved in future Petro Peru financing, let's first break down the oil industry at large. You can break the oil industry's processes down into three different categories. First, the upstream, then the midstream, and finally the downstream. The upstream describes oil exploration and production, the process of finding oil on the ground and also extracting that oil. Once oil is extracted from the ground, however, it must be refined in order for it to be ready for use. For this to happen, it has to go through the midstream. The midstream refers to the transportation of oil from the ground to a refinery. This transportation can happen in many ways, but the most common way to do this would be through oil pipelines. Finally, we get to the downstream business, which describes refineries, which finds oil so that it's ready to use. Petra Peru operates in all three of these businesses. Petra Peru mostly operates in the midstream and downstream business by transporting oil through the North Peruvian Pipeline, or ONP for short. This crude is then refined in one of the country's refineries. Petra Peru returned to the upstream business in 2021 by operating Block 1, located in the North Peruvian coast, and may operate on Blocks 64, 8, and 192 in the Peruvian Amazon, in partnership with other companies. So what allows Petra Peru to be able to do this in the first place? Well, as with any business, money. Oil companies that run midstream, downstream, and upstream businesses are often super capital intensive and will require a lot of long-term financing. For example, building expensive infrastructure like a refinery may cost up to billions of dollars, and that's not something that they may have on hand. 
To get this money, oil companies typically rely on financial institutions in long-term financing either through the government if they're a state-run company or international financial institutions to support its projects. Unfortunately, despite warnings and scientific back reports that push for the phase-out of fossil fuels due to its contribution to the climate crisis, financial institutions of many kinds continue to pour billions of dollars into these industries and projects plagued by social, environmental, political, and legal risks. PetroPeru and its operations are a good example of this. The North Peruvian Pipeline, for instance, or ONP for short, has caused many environmental, biodiversity, and social impacts. PetroPeru's potential plans to operate on blocks in the Peruvian Amazon as well as the North Peruvian coast may also drive further consequences and risks plans to expand the upstream business is also being driven by its downstream business, by its Telaro refinery modernization project. This project cost the company around $5.3 billion, plunging them into really deep debt. Though the company claims that the modernization of the refinery is meant to be more sustainable, lead to greener outcomes, and be more environmentally friendly as a whole, this refinery can actually drive more oil exploration and exploitation in the Amazon. And so when we actually look at this overview, all three of their businesses are connected in some way. The upstream can drive further risks to the midstream, and the downstream can have effects on the other two businesses. It means that we can't see the risks in isolation. Financing one part of the business will inevitably affect the other businesses. Despite this potential outcome, many international financiers, which includes banks to insurance companies, have financially backed Petra Peru for up to billions of dollars for the building of this refinery. In contradiction to policies and commitments that center climate, human rights, and the environment. Suppose First, let's look at banks. On a larger scale, banks provide this long-term financing to fossil fuel companies who might need extra capital in order to get projects started. As seen from this diagram, from 2017 to 2021, PetroPeru has received $5.3 billion in financing for its Telaro refinery modernization project. This $5.3 billion can be broken down into two different financial instruments, a loan and multiple bonds. This diagram shows which banks have taken part in financing the loan and which banks have managed the bonds and the overlap in between. Let's look at how these financial instruments differ. First, let's take a look at loans. A loan is a large borrowed sum of money that can be given by a bank to a corporation. In exchange for this money, corporations agree to pay back this loan with additional interest over time. That's how both parties are able to mutually benefit from this deal. In the case that a corporation can't pay back this loan to a bank, it means that they will default on the loan, meaning that the bank will lose out on its money. Bonds, on the other hand, work slightly differently. You can think of bonds as a big loan that's cut up into even tinier pieces. For bonds, banks can play an additional type of role called underwriting. Underwriting is the process in which a bank can serve as an intermediary between the corporation that's seeking a bond and many investors who are looking to finance bits and pieces of that bond. That means it's up to the investor to choose the amounts that they'd want to invest in this particular bond. And now that I've broken down the difference between a loan and a bond, I'm actually going to talk a little bit more about a specific type of loan called a syndicated loan. A syndicated loan is a loan that's evenly divided into a handful of banks. Since many banks are only paying a portion of the syndicated loan, the financial risk of a possible default on the loan by the company becomes minimized and therefore less financially risky. Banks may be more inclined to finance this type of loan, as seen on the diagram. We find that $1.3 billion of this financing was actually a syndicated loan that involved 13 different banks, many of which included US banks and European banks. In this entire deal, however, there's one really important detail that I should point out. If you look closely at this $1.3 billion syndicated loan, you see that this loan was guaranteed or backed by an institution called an export credit agency. An export credit agency, or ECA for short, is a public financial institution that can be government-backed. These types of financial institutions insure lines of credit and loans in the same way that we get health insurance or car insurance. Oil companies and commercial industries can get insurance so that risky projects are also covered. It doesn't mean that they're providing that money up front like a bank would. Instead, they offer insurance on the loan that the bank would give in the future.
Understanding the implications of this loan guarantee or loan insurance is key. Having an export credit agency backing a loan, the financial risk to banks, in the case of a default by a company, will be shifted from the financiers of the loan to the export credit agency, and by proxy, the country's taxpayers. And you can visualize that here on this diagram. Okay, so I just threw a bunch of finance terminology, so let's do a quick recap. First, banks can provide two types of long-term financing called loans and bonds. For the purposes of this webinar, we're going to hone in on loans. PetroPru has received a syndicated loan amounting up to $1.3 billion, many banks of which are U.S. banks and European banks. Looking closely at this loan, we find that the syndicated loan actually had loan insurance backed by an export credit agency. So now that we've gone through that little recap, you might be wondering, when is Italy going to get involved in all of this? Well, it's time to find out. In March of 2023, PetroPru released its quarterly earnings statement. These documents are essentially a treasure trove of information that can enable us to find out what a company might do next. Surprise, surprise, when we looked at this document, Italy, and more specifically, its export credit agency, called Sace, was actually named in there as a potential financier. This paragraph right here states that Petra Peru wants even more money for its refinery for up to $500 million on top of the $5.3 billion it has already received, which leads us to believe that Petra Peru may be trying to get a syndicated loan. Although sources suggest that the deal hasn't been fully finalized yet, recent information from an Italian parliament hearing questioning Sace for this deal indicates that Sace still wants to push this project through, despite being made aware of community opposition. Sace, through the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation, states that this deal meets the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number 7, or SDG 7 for short. However, this is a pretty flawed argument. SDG 7, and in fact all SDGs, we must have holistic approaches that respect rights and also push the phase out of fossil fuels. Investing in a refinery will clearly contradict SDG 7. Nonetheless, if Sachi does push through with this Petro Peru deal, it won't be the first time that it's financed really highly contested projects that have lots of community opposition. In recent years, Sachi was named one of the biggest public financiers of fossil fuels in Europe. In 2016 and 2021, Sachi invested in almost 13.7 billion euros of fossil fuels around the world. This year, Italy continues to contradict its own climate commitments, which includes the Glasgow Agreement, which they signed in 2021. As a result, many civil society groups, both in Italy and around the world, continue to scrutinize Sace's deals. However, we are confident that there may be a small window of time to intervene in this deal. Information just from a couple of weeks ago shows that PetroPeru is still scrambling to get money. This news leads us to believe that the terms of the Sace deal may still be very much up in the air. That's why we think it's so crucial to push for a meeting between Sace representatives and indigenous communities who may be affected by Petra Peru's operations in the near future. Sace's ensuring of Petra Peru enables further destruction, but what does that look like on the grounds in the lives of indigenous peoples? If you follow us on socials, you may have seen videos of our partners from the Atuar and One Piece peoples sharing their community's experiences of environmental devastation, pollution of water sources, community division, and other harms caused by Petro Peru on their territory. The Atuar and One Piece form part of the Mar Amazonia Alliance, a coalition of five communities from the Amazon and across the North Peruvian coast, all affected and may potentially be affected by Petro Peru's business practices. This alliance serves to address the oil company's negligence and interrupt its funding. Here today is the president of the Chopra Nation, Olivia Bisa, who also forms a part of that alliance and has joined us to share her unique experiences and those of her people. So with that, let's summarize this part of the webinar. The oil industry can be broken down into three types of businesses the upstream, midstream, and downstream businesses. Petrofruit's operations pose severe risks to the environment, to local communities that reside near its operations, as well as the climate. Potential plans to expand oil exploration and production in blocks on the North Peruvian coast and the Peruvian Amazon exacerbates climate risks. Third, Petrofruit has been backed by an onslaught of international financiers ranging from U.S. banks to European banks. Petrofruit is seeking new financing of up around $500 million involving a loan guarantee 
of Export Credit Agency, Sache. There is a small window of intervention in this transaction. To maximize our chance of success, we'll need your help and support in order to draw attention to this deal. And with that, thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this webinar. And Hello everyone. We're back from Mary's teaching. It sounds like there was some trouble with fo for folks to hear the video and I just wanted to let you all know that there will be a recorded version sent out to the um to the whole list of attendees and folks who were not able to make it today. Uh in the video she was sharing a bit about the different types of funding in in the financial institution, in Sache, excuse me. Sache is an export credit agency and they are looking to, to ensure Petro Peru, which is an oil company in the Peruvian Amazon, who is known for its human rights violations and environmental destruction within the Amazon. And so the idea of the webinar was to bring the information about who Sache is and how it's affecting, how it's financing of Petro Peru or not financing, I apologize. I'm trying to go with the flow considering the technical difficulties. Um, Sache is planning to ensure financing for Petro Peru, which would essentially enable it to continue its, um, its operations in the Amazon. And so what we want to do with this webinar is to learn about what that looks like in the background, and then through the action R in a bit after Olivia speaks, we want to draw attention to this deal and pressure Sache to not go through with this deal, and then also ask ask them to please meet with indigenous leaders who have a their real experience to real experiences to share with Sache about what is happening on the ground, not this you know greenwashed version of what Petro Peru shares with them. Right, and so now I'm going to pass the mic to Olivia Visa, which is when you can, now would be a good time to change the interpretation um, button and we'll pass it on to her and she'll share some of those experiences that we were referring to and some of those videos that you were seeing. Um, and yeah, so Olivia, go ahead. Olivia is actually at Climate Week right now. Climate Week is currently being held in New York City. It's a climate event that brings together uh, political leaders, business people, local local leaders and civil society, and of course, indigenous leaders from all over the world. And so she's currently there right now, which might be why she is having a bit of an issue. But also I just wanted to emphasize while we wait for her to get her video started, that it this having this webinar during Climate Week is crucial because of the fact that there are so many leaders and um, influential people within in the climate justice movement in New York right now. And so it's really important that we call attention to, to what's happening in Peru as far as, um, sorry, Olivia, are you saying something? That's fine. We can start without video, Olivia. Go ahead and start without video. Muy buenas tardes. Agradecidas por la invitación a este webinar muy importante para nosotros los pueblos indígenas. Quiero empezar presentándome. Mi nombre es Olivia Isatirco. Soy del pueblo originario Chapra 
ubicado en el distrito de Morona, provincia de Atem del Marañón, departamento de Loreto, Perú. Para empezar, quiero informar que los bancos que están prestando dinero a la empresa Petro Perú están siendo cómplice del etnocidio de los pueblos indígenas en la Amazonía. Al momento de desaparecer los pueblos indígenas, también están desapareciendo la Amazonía. Y con eso quiero decir que nosotros, los seres humanos, todos que vivimos en el planeta Tierra, nos estamos autodestruyendo, porque la Amazonía es quien nos da el aire, el agua, la vida, los alimentos. Y no es justo que los pueblos indígenas tienen que seguir pagando los precios con sus vidas en el momento cuando deciden donar o prestar dinero a las empresas petroleras. Mi nación se ha vuelto muy afectada en el 11 de septiembre del 2022 cuando en el oleoducto Ramal Norte generó un derrame en el territorio Chapra en el kilómetro 177. Nosotros, muy preocupados, hemos pedido a la empresa Petro Perú que remedie, que limpie todos estos desastres que está generando en el territorio de la nación. Durante 47 años no hubo derrame, pero sucedió. Y en vez de Petro Perú asumir su responsabilidad de remediar y limpiar su derrame, lo que hizo es criminalizar. Yo hasta el momento tengo seis procesos penales que Petro Perú me ha dado. Son seis denuncias que me está enfrentando. Ahorita, con el apoyo de Amazon Watch, hemos contratado un abogado para que nos pueda defender, porque nosotros como defensores de la naturaleza, de la vida, de la existencia de la humanidad, no contamos con un apoyo legal, ya que el gobierno peruano y las empresas son prácticamente un enemigo para el movimiento indígena, para el pueblo indígena, cuando reclama su derecho a la vida. Todos en los tratados, en los acuerdos, hablan de cómo debemos de parar esta crisis climática antes de que sea demasiado tarde. Pero en estos acuerdos no hay un acuerdo netamente de cómo se debe evitar más explotación petrolera en la Amazonía. Eso no se está cumpliendo. Solo todos, todos los países hablan de cómo salvarse, cómo salvar al planeta, pero no hablan que el daño más que está ocasionando en el desastre del planeta Tierra es los combustibles fósiles, los petróleos. Petro Perú tiene problemas en los territorios indígenas, en todos sus lotes, en todo el, el trayecto del oleoducto norperuano, las, por las tuberías. Tiene 375 derrames en los oleoductos de Petro Perú y hasta la fecha el 85% de estos derrames son en territorios indígenas. Si el banco que está apoyando y Secha que está dando credibilidad para que aporten préstamos a Petro Perú está siendo cómplice de la desaparición de la existencia de los pueblos indígenas y asimismo siendo cómplice con la desaparición y el desastre de nuestro planeta Tierra. Todos nos preocupamos cuando viene una enfermedad COVID-19, nos enseñó un gran lector. Todos los países grandes del mundo han colapsado, pero yo tengo el orgullo de decir que mi territorio, gracias a mi naturaleza y a lo que me brinda, no hemos muerto con COVID-19. Eso es un claro ejemplo de que la Amazonía es vida, te salva de la muerte, pero estos bancos están haciendo que nos muramos todos en general. Petroleros, los indígenas, el Estado quieren vivir. Todos necesitamos de agua, 
todos necesitamos de aire, todos necesitamos comer para vivir, pero cuando meten dinero para explotación petrolera, estás destruyendo el aire, estás destruyendo el agua, estás destruyendo la seguridad alimentaria, y con eso estamos destruyéndonos nosotros mismos a nuestro planeta. Es hora de reflexionar, porque Petro Perú vende su imagen a los, otros, a los otros países que no hay un problema en los pueblos indígenas, que no hay problema en donde que va a operar. Pero nosotros somos bien firmes, no tenemos miedo a las denuncias, porque el territorio es nuestra vida, somos un solo puño. Amazonía, bosque, territorio, pueblos indígenas, somos uno solo. Nosotros no somos divididos porque vivimos gracias a la tierra y vamos a morir por nuestra tierra. Quiero también hacer muy específico, ahorita Petro Perú está criminalizando a todas las, a las personas que están defendiendo el territorio. Hablo directamente por lote 64, porque tanto Achuar, Juan Piz, Chapra, están siendo afectados grandemente por este lote que ya está en contrato y que se va a trabajar. Y por eso Petro Perú está buscando financiamiento. Y yo quiero ser muy claro acá que Petro Perú no va a lograr, porque el pueblo indígena no lo va a permitir. En lote 64 estuvieron, estuvieron Oxy, Talisman, Petro Perú, Opar. Y ninguno se han podido ingresar para explotar en el lote 64, porque nosotros no hemos permitido. Está afectando las cuencas sagradas que tenemos, los ríos que son, las cabeceras de los ríos que somos, son sagrados, no solamente para el pueblo indígena, sino para la existencia de la humanidad. Porque sin agua, todos nos vamos a desaparecer. Sin aire, todos nos vamos a desaparecer. Petro Perú tiene denuncias por daños ambientales, por daños sociales. Y eso es lo que no conoce en el banco. El crédito que están dando Petro Perú no presta las garantías y no tiene gobernanza. ¿Por qué? Porque cada rato están cambiando a los presidentes de directorios de Petro Perú. No tiene sostenibilidad las exploraciones del lote 64 porque nosotros no vamos a permitir que quede bien claro a los bancos que están queriendo aportar dinero a Petro Perú que nosotros no vamos a permitir están arriesgando sus presupuestos de inversión financiando a Petro Perú porque Petro Perú lo que está haciendo es criminalizando, amenazando matando destruyendo a los pueblos indígenas y también destruyendo la Amazonía. Eso nosotros estamos acá ahorita en Nueva York, porque la gran parte de los bancos que financian para la explotación petrolera están en los países Europa y Norteamérica, y más en Nueva York. Por eso hemos venido a decir, si queremos realmente vivir como seres humanos en este planeta llamado Tierra, dejemos ya de dar dinero para seguir más explotando el petróleo. La madre tierra está sangrando porque sus hijos están destruyéndolo a la mamá. La tierra es lo que nos produce, nos da vida. Pero estos grandes empresarios están destruyendo. Y no se dan cuenta el peligro real que hay. Porque tanto los, tanto los empresarios y los indígenas y los estados no tienen un territorio en el aire para, para salvarse cuando la tierra se destruya. Todos vivimos y pisamos esta tierra. Y todos vamos a morir si es que seguimos explotando más lotes petroleros en los lugares estratégicos que son de mucha importancia. Todos hablan que la Amazonía es el pulmón del mundo, pero con el dinero que ustedes envían, los bancos envían a, los Petro, a Petro Perú y a otras empresas petroleras, están haciendo que ese pulmón del mundo se destruya. Eso tenemos que llevar conciencia. El Estado y las empresas petroleras y los bancos tienen que pensar en sus futuros. Nosotros tenemos hijos. Así como los grandes empresarios, los grandes bancos, eh, 
eh, presidentes de banco, tienen hijos, quieren que sus hijos vivan, pero mis hijos y sus hijos se van a morir por si, nos, si ellos siguen dando plata a Petro Perú para que siga explorando. Eso no debemos permitir. Debemos de actuar todos unidos para proteger la tierra. El pueblo indígena es un aliado estratégico para conservar el bosque, la Amazonía, el agua, garantizar alimento para la existencia de la especie de humanidad y ser, ser humano no significa, no, no tiene límites y tampoco no conoce la posición política porque todos los seres vivos que necesitamos del agua, necesitamos del aire, necesitamos comer para vivir. Eso tenemos que pensar muy bien y decir claramente con la posición como mujer, como madre, como indígena, que no vamos a permitir más pozos petroleros en el territorio de los pueblos indígenas. Si me tienen que matar o mandar a la cárcel, háganlo. Pero yo y mi pueblo no vamos a permitir. Somos una alianza de nueve nacionalidades que no vamos a poder permitir a que sigan matándonos. Y los mangos tienen que ser conscientes. El pueblo indígena vive por su tierra y va a morir por su tierra. Muchas gracias. Olivia, um, what you said was really touching, really intense. We appreciate your time and your vulnerability and your honesty so much. That sounds hearing you speak is really heart wrenching and thank you again so much for sharing everything that you that you did we really appreciate you being here Ooh, just give it a moment um yeah i know you all i know you all felt her this is this is a a struggle that her community lives through every single day, which is why we're so grateful that you all are here to participate in this action hour. Uh, the messages that Mary and Olivia shared today about pressuring Sache, this, this uh, financial campaigning that we're doing at Amazon Watch is one of the many ways that we're working to end Amazon Crude, to defend indigenous defenders, to defend earth defenders and your participation is really crucial. You know, there's not always a lot of opportunities for us to participate. A lot of this work is done in the background. Um, and I'm sure that you all also participate in actions, um, like in-person actions. And I know you all have participated in previous uh, webinars and online actions that we've taken. So it's really crucial to find the place that makes the most sense for us as individuals to participate in as much as we can to support uh, communities like Bolivia's and others throughout the Amazon in different Amazonian countries. Uh, so we're going to move on to our next uh, webinar phase, which is the action hour. Uh, in this action hour, we're gonna focus on making sure that Sache hears Olivia's community's message and that they need to speak with them. They need to share these exact experiences with them with the intent of potentially pressuring Sache to not ensure Petro Peru, to not move forward with these deals, to not enable this destruction. So we're going to do that by using a what we call a social kit. Right here on the screen is the social kit. In it is an explanation of what we've talked about today, the importance of the work that we're going to do right now, and the four different actions that are broken down. Uh, we're gonna start off with the LinkedIn action. The kit is in the chat as well, exactly. So you can click on the link in the chat. I'll give you all a minute to click on the link in the chat and familiarize yourself with the content. I see that we have some hands raised and I think it is it is important if anyone has questions. 
if anyone has questions. It doesn't look like there's any questions on the social kit. Please do add them if you have them. Otherwise, we're gonna move forward. So the first action is on LinkedIn. I think it's important for you all to know that Sache is very active on their LinkedIn, which is why we thought that this was one crucial way to take action is to make sure that they see the several voices here today and maybe others who will participate after this webinar that you all know what's happening and that you want to you want them to take the time to listen to indigenous voices and that they're not going unseen by the public, right? So this first message that we have for Sache is a direct ask. Please meet with them. They're ready to meet and share their experiences with you. So if you can press the blue button to share on LinkedIn, it will take you to a screen. Uh, per potentially, if you haven't logged into LinkedIn already, it can take you to the login screen, put in your password, and you can share the action. So you'll post, we've added all the correct, all the hashtags to get this action seen on their page. So thank you, Ada, You're, she's doing it twice. They can be shared on Facebook. I saw that someone is asking. Uh, they can be shared on Facebook, but we don't have that set up here on this social kit. So feel free to really share this anywhere that you would like that you have that you have a social profile on. And you do have to have a LinkedIn account to do this action, but don't worry, we have two other actions on Twitter. And if you don't have social at all, you we also have a petition that you can sign, but we'll go through this uh, one at a time. So no worries if you don't have these social channels. So then the second action is, or the, I'm sorry, the second message on LinkedIn uh, for Sache is the, um, the SDG seven goals or the United Nations sustainability goals that Mary was talking about earlier in her teaching. So Sache claims that the reason they will continue to work with Petro Peru is because they meet the SDG seven goals. So essentially nitpicking at which goals they meet, but ignoring other goals that include, you know, environmental and health goals. So we want to highlight this to Sache to say you are you're agreeing to work with them for this specific goal, goal, but ignoring other ones that they're not meeting. Okay, and these are the two same messages for LinkedIn and Twitter. And now we're going to move on to Twitter. And so you can log into your Twitter account and post these same actions. I'm going to check in the chat. This is very, very interactive. So please feel free to ask any questions in the chat if you're struggling with any of this. Ada has put the copy into the chat and the link. So we have the link right above the socialpresskit.com slash fossil fuel financing. At that, that's the link with all of this content on it. And you can take that and put it anywhere that you see fit, everywhere, really. You can definitely personalize the script. Absolutely. For the sake of time, uh, we're not gonna do it right now, but you're absolutely welcome to do it. What I've done in the past as well is you can bring up these screens, leave them up. And then as soon as we're done with the webinar, you can take your time to think through what you would like to say and then post. That's also a great way to do it. Absolutely. They're very sensitive about their public image. They'll be watching. Um, they're also, Petro Peru is really responsive. This might be a good time 
this might be a good time to share with you a story of how responsive oil company Petro Peru is, uh, which is really, um, we went we went on a delegation last year to New York City with a group of, of indigenous leaders from the Amazon, from the Peruvian Amazon, Achuar, One Piece, and um, Cabo Blanco fishermen community leaders. And they went to meet with bank representatives where they shared these same experiences that Olivia is sharing with you today with directly with the bank representatives. And in the, in the same time, at the same time, uh, we were getting, we were having our supporters share content like this on social media and Petro Peru ended up reaching out to our executive director to make, uh, you know, to ask that we stop sharing this information, that it's not true, that we were um, sharing false information when really there is, we have reports with all of this information, which we essentially sent over to them and, and said, you know, there is this proof, these experiences, this research, these um, stats to be shared. So that was a great, um, that was a great turnout. And it's saying that it's not letting you post on LinkedIn. That might be are so going through actually. They are. It might show an error, but they are going through. I can see them on LinkedIn. Great, that's great. Good to hear. Thank you so much, Ada, for checking on that. So it looks like they are going through, which is great to hear that will have 50 plus people's um, posts on LinkedIn and Twitter, potentially more. We'll be sharing this social kit online so that folks can continue to participate throughout the week. All right, so. We're gonna give it just one more minute. And I'm also gonna go check on all those posts. This is exciting to see. Yeah, I am seeing some here. All right, so now that we've taken about 10 minutes to go over this action R, we're going to move on to the Q&A. And before we do, I just wanna reiterate that everyone who signed up, who registered for this webinar will be getting an email tomorrow with the uh, webinar recording and the link to the social kit. And yes, I will. We will add the LinkedIn content into the chat so that you can so that you can do it right now. All right, so it looks like we have a qu couple questions in the chat. I think I'd like to start off with Olivia's question since we have her available. I'm not, a, oh, why is the water clear by Olisa, Oli, Olivia, but polluted brown below the pond? Not exactly sure. Oh, I apologize, everyone. I'm moving too fast. I got excited. Uh, we did forget one last 
One last action. Thank you for pointing that out. We have the last action, which is the petition. And it's linked right into the social kit. It's the expose the complicity of financial institutions petition. And that's referring to everything that we've been talking about today. So by signing this petition, uh, we're gathering as many names as possible, as many people involved, again, to build pressure. And we're go there's going to be a delega delegation going to Rome uh, very soon with several, several organizations that are going to take these petition signatures to, they're going to take these petition signatures to uh, denounce Sace in Italy. So that's the exciting part about this petition is that it will be delivered in Italy to influential leaders that have the ability to pressure Sace. So that's the last action is if you could sign the petition to expose the complicity of financial institutions and we'll be sharing this petition with political leaders in Italy. This is all in the social press kit. I'm seeing people are asking for links. And this is all this information is found in the social press kit. And it's it's numbered. So there's the first action, which is LinkedIn. The second action is Twitter. The third action is to share, is to sign this petition. And then the fourth is going to be that we all share this petition on our social media pages. And that can easily be done as soon as you sign the petition. If you scroll down, there are options for all of the social platforms available and that will directly share the petition. As shown on screen. Great. So it looks like we've gone through all of the actions and now we're gonna move on to the, to the Q and A. Uh, we can start off with Michelle Bertelli's uh, question, which specific project will the Italian agency Sace ensure? And the specific project that we're referring to is Petro Peru's um, Talara Refinery. So Talara is looking, the Talara Refinery is, is looking to be um, financed for improvements. I believe that's, I'm saying it correctly, I apologize. Um, and so they're looking for financing for that specific refinery, Petro Peru is, and Sache would essentially insure that loan. So if that were to get loan insured, the, the banks would require insurance for that loan. So in order for that loan to be given, there needs to be insurance in case, you know, there's any there's any interruptions in those in those uh, plans that the bank knows that it's going to get its money because it has that insurance. So the way that this financing uh, finance campaigning is working is that we're trying to create pressure for Sache to not insure that loan, which would then make that impossible for Petro Peru to get that money to be able to continue its its operations. I don't know if I can answer Mark's question. I'm not exactly sure what you mean if you wanted to um, reiterate that in the chat. And then the other question is approaching banks here, Sister Deanne Rose von Bargen, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, is asking um, approaching banks here in California, we found out that their decision affect shareholders to whom they are duty bound. Is it the same in Peru? Let 
One second, please. We're going to hold off on this question for one second because uh, Olivia is asking to respond to your question mark. Go ahead, Olivia, you can answer. Sí. El ima la imagen que representa es el derrame de crudo que está yendo hacia las quebradas en el río. Si bien se sabe que el crudo puede deslizar, pero integra dentro en el territorio, en, el, en la profundidad del agua. Esto quiere decir que nosotros hemos venido resistiéndonos a cualquier actividad de esta activista durante años. Pero este derrame marcó totalmente nuestra, en nuestro territorio, muy lamentablemente, porque ni el Estado peruano ni la empresa no se preocupa por cuidar el agua. De, la, de, la, de los habitantes de todos los pueblos originarios, Ningún pueblo originario tiene agua potable para beber de eso. Todos bebemos del agua del río. Por eso es muy importante para nosotros cuidar este río. No sé si con esa, con esa respuesta les queda más claro o si podrían especificar un poco más la pregunta a qué se refiere. El agua que está saliendo o, eh, del color negro es el petróleo que está avanzando hacia río abajo, saliendo ya por el, el, el Amazonas y del Amazonas al mar. All right, and we're, so we're going to head back to that question. Gracias, Olivia. Uh, we're going to head back to that question that we were asked by Sister Deanne Rose. Uh, so approaching banks here in California, we found out that their decisions affect shareholders to whom they are duty bound. Is that the same in Peru? And uh, we have Ada who will answer this question. Thanks for this question. Um, so one of the challenges with Petro Peru is that there are several layers of, oh great, Mary's joining so she can probably chime in on this as well. There are several layers of financing and um, insurance that happens for fossil fuels. So specifically around Petro Peru, we've been looking at several banks through various reports that we've released in the past. And those share shareholders are in fact duty bound. Um, and that is on both the free prior and informed consent and rights violations um, at different levels. It could be uh, nat rights to nature violations. But in particular with the project that we're talking about today, um, the Talera refinery that Sachi is looking to insure, because Sachi is the environment uh, expert credit agency of Italy, it is bound to um, the citizens of Italy. And so the pressure that we've been working on with some allies has been specifically to mobilize civil society in Italy to call out the hypocrisy of this type of financing based on those developed sustainable development goals that Cynthia mentioned earlier. Um, and I wonder if Mary would also like to chime in and talk a little bit about this. Um, are you hi. hi, hi everyone. Um, can you repeat the question, Ada? Just yes. Okay, thank you. The question is, approaching banks here in California, we found out that their decisions affect shareholders to whom they are duty bound. Is this the same in Peru? Yes, yeah, so thank you for that question. Um, and to 
Yeah, so what uh, Otto was saying, right? So since Sace is a government-backed agency, it means that the taxpayers in Italy are actually, technically, they're the ones that are that's funding the load insurance should it default. Um, and so being able to reach an Italian constituency is really important. And so that's how our digital actions connect to that, is to be able to see, okay, where are Italians looking at Sace? And we find that they're trying to essentially greenwash their image. They're basically greenwashing, saying that they, um, you know, they are following the Glasgow commitments. Um, they are sustainable, but through our digital actions, we're able to disrupt that. And so, yeah, uh, I hope that helps. It definitely does, Mary. Thank you so much that and other as well and I'm looking into the chat to see if we have any more questions I did want to say though we are running out of time and to respect Olivia's time because I'm aware that she has many commitments during climate week I will say that if there's any more questions in the chat I think it's best that we um what we'll do is we'll send out an email with uh the answers to the chat the questions perdón the link to the webinar and the social press kit so you can take these actions on your own time. I want to thank all of you so much for being here and of course always uh, for your patience with everything, uh, a lot of moving parts and so much impactful information. And if, if you have any questions, we're here, we're available and we're really excited to hear from you with, with anything that you'd like to reach out to us about, any questions, any support you need with understanding this material. And again, thank you so much. Thank you everyone who participated. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Olivia. And our interpreters and our panelists. And we appreciate all of you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Adios. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias.